but there's some points that I want to highlight today. And um, if you if you needed a synopsis or if you needed a main idea today, I just want to talk about honor God and He will honor you. Amen. Honor God and He will honor you. So in Esther, you see an amazing example of that. And so I'm going to start in in chapter 2. I'm not really talking about Esther today. I want to talk about Mordecai and the honor that was bestowed upon him. So in chapter 2, it introduces, you know, in, in the first chapter, it introduced what was going on with Queen Vashti, and she dishonored the king, so they ousted her, and they needed a new queen. And so in chapter 2, it, it introduces um, Esther and Mordecai. And in, in verse 7, it said, And Mordecai had brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So it was when the king's command and decree were heard, and when many young women were gathered at Shushan the citadel under the custody of Haggai, that Esther also was taken to the king's palace into the care of Haggai, the custodian of the women. Now the young woman pleased him, and she obtained favor, so he readily gave her beauty preparations besides her allowance, and seven choice maidservants were provided for her for the king's palace, and he moved her and her maidservants to the best place in the house of women. And Esther had not revealed her people or her family for Mordecai had charged her not to reveal it. So let's just pray. Father, we ask you this morning, in Jesus' name, that you would be revealed in your word. Holy Spirit, have your way. We humbly ask you, God, show us what you would have us to see today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. So it introduces Mordecai and Esther, and Mordecai, I think it was actually her cousin, and he brought her up as his own, and he charged her not to reveal her family origin. And so she did not, she did not do that. She honored what he said. And it says in verse 11, And every day Mordecai paced in front of the court of the women's quarters to learn of Esther's welfare and what was happening to her. So every day he was there at the court, you know, what's going on with you, Esther? And he was concerned because... He wanted to make sure that she was well. And in verse, let's see, verse 21, In those days while Mordecai sat within the king's gate, two of the king's eunuchs, Bigthon and Teresh, doorkeepers, became furious and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And so the matter became known to Mordecai, who told Queen Esther, and she informed the king of Mordecai's name. And when an inquiry was made into the matter, it was confirmed, and both were hanged on the gallows, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles in the presence of the king. Don't you know that whatever you do for the Lord is written in a book? Now, you may think you're forgotten. You may think that nobody noticed, but it's in the book. And so in, in chapter 3, after these things, King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of, some of these names are just really something. <laughs> Hamedatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above the princes who are with him. So you have an enter Haman who is an ambitious man, and he wants to elevate himself in the kingdom, and he wants to be somebody, but he doesn't do it through humble means. He wants to be first, and he thinks very highly of himself. So when the king's servants are within the king's gate, and as we just read, Mordecai is always within the king's gate. And as he's waiting there, when Haman comes through, he wants somebody to pay homage to him. And so he commands that the servants there pay homage to him. They won't, they, he wants them to bow. And so Mordecai would not bow or pay homage. So that just infuriates Haman. It infuriates uh, Mordecai's enemy and he is filled with wrath and when he sees in verse 5 when Haman saw that Mordecai did not bow or pay him homage he is filled with wrath and so he begins to concoct this plan of you know how how am I going to get rid of this guy he won't pay me homage he won't bow to me uh, he won't give me the respect that I deserve and so he begins to cook this whole plan to get rid of Mordecai 
as he's doing this, it kind of morphs. Mordecai makes him more angry, as we'll see. And it, it morphs into not just wanting to get rid of Mordecai. He plans to get rid of all those Jews because they're not paying, giving him the honor that he deserves. Boy, pride will set you up. I'm telling you, pride will set you up. And I just want to also note that the name Mordecai means penitent or contrite. So Mordecai was a humble man. He did not demand any special treatment because Esther was in the king's court. He did not demand anybody to pay him homage. He did not demand any special things from Esther. He sat at the gate and wanted to know of her welfare. He was a humble man. And so we see that he sat at the gate and that because he was there, two things happened. Because Mordecai had this humble place because he took a lower place because he was where he should be that that put him in the perfect place as we read earlier to hear of the plan to assassinate the king see when you're in that right place when you're in a place of humility god will give you opportunities and so because mordecai is contrite and because he's penitent he is able to actually inform the king of this potential uh, threat to the king's life and so you contrast that with Haman, who's at the king's gate, but he wants all the praise. He wants all the honor. And the name Haman actually means noise or tumult. Y'all know anybody like that? Always making noise. You know, that reminds me of my enemy. I'm talking in spiritual terms. Always making noise. Always wanting to be acknowledged. You know, your enemy wants to be acknowledged. He'll make a lot of noise in your life. He'll, he'll bring a lot of tumult or tumultuous things in your life. The enemy likes to be noisy. So that's the way Haman was, and he was commanding them to bow to him and pay him homage. And so in chapter 6, I love this chapter because you see how God can turn something around. Now, this morning we're talking about if you honor God, he'll honor you. And let me just say this, that God can honor you in a way that you never dreamt of. The honor of this world is one thing, but the honor of God, there is nothing like the honor that God will give you. And sometimes we're too impatient to wait for it, but Mordecai was humble, and he just sat there at the king's gate. Even when he was the one to thwart the assassination plans, he never made any demands. He just sat at the king's gate. What a humble man. And so we see in, in chapter 6, that night the king couldn't sleep. So one was commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, the doorkeepers, who had sought to lay hands on the king. So the king said, well, what honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? See, God doesn't forget what you do. And the king's servants who attended him said, nothing has been done for him. And the king said, well, who's in the court? Well, guess who was in the court? Haman. And you know why he was in the court? He was in the court because he wanted to meet with the king because he wanted to talk about what to do about this Mordecai guy. I mean, he was right there ready to be talk to the king about getting rid of this Mordecai. And so he's, he's ready. So when king looks out, he sees Haman, and Haman had just entered that outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared. And the king's servant said, Haman's there standing in the court. And the king's like, let him in. Oh, good, Haman's here. So let me talk to Haman about this. So Haman came in, and the king asked him, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor? And Haman thought in his heart, well, whom would the king delight to honor but me? You know, who, would, who in the world would the king ever want to honor but me? I mean, he, he, through his pride, he could not even see what the reality was. And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought, upon, be brought which the king has worn, and a horse which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. And let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him on horseback through the city square, and proclaim before him, Thus shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. And the king said, Hurry, Haman, take the robe and the horse as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai the Jew, who sits within the king's gate. Nothing undone 
Leave nothing undone of all that you had spoken. So Haman had to do all these things for his worst en- I mean, you talk about irony. For his worst enemy, he had to do all these things for Mordecai. And he had to be the one to go before the horse and say, you know, such happens to those whom the king delights to honor. And it reminds me of the scripture. Thou will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou wilt prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And Mordecai was able to wear the royal royal robe that the king had already worn, ride on a horse that the king had already ridden on. A crown was put on his head, and a proclamation was made. What an honor. And as he went through the streets, Mordecai sat on this procession and, and Haman had to declare, Thus shall be done to the man whom the the king delights to honor. You know, that word honor in Hebrew means to add weightiness, to add preciousness, significance. God wants to honor you, but you have to be in a place to be honored. You know, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. He can't honor us if we have pride. He can't honor us if, you know, if we're thinking that we deserve this or that. He can't honor that because he has to have us in a place where we're humble. And as I read through Esther, I love the place where Mordecai is honored because it was coals upon his enemy's head. Only God can honor you like that. Only God can put you on a king's horse with a king's robe and a king's crown and have your enemy walk before you and declare, thus happens to the man whom the king delights to honor. Only God can do that. And I'm telling you that when you honor God and when you walk humbly before the Lord, you don't have to worry about reward. God will reward you. We don't have to consider what the world may reward us or what the world can give us. If we walk humbly before him, he will honor you in ways that you have never dreamt possible. And Mordecai is an example of that. So just as Haman was so impatient to get Mordecai executed and he comes to the court early, he's the one that has to honor Mordecai. And so Haman wanted to appear in all the pomp and grandeur of the king himself. He, He wanted to be the one you know, to to be honored by the king, but that's not what the king had in store. So the Bible says in Psalm 91, 15, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God will deliver you and he will honor you. He will make you, that word is actually the word kabod, which we use for the glory of God. It's weightiness. It's to be rich, numerous, abounding. God will make you abound. He will honor you to make great, to promote. And I'm telling you now in this place that there's going to be people in this building. God is going to promote you this year. I believe that so strongly. Proverbs 15, 33, before honor is humility. I used to tell Zeke and Isaac this. God gives us great talents. God gives us abilities. But it kind of reminds me of a bus that you set upon a pedestal. If that pedestal is not strong enough to support that bust, it will fall over and crumble. Your character has to be that pedestal to hold up the talent and the abilities. Otherwise, it just crumbles. And you can see that with with sports stars and Hollywood stars and politicians. They don't have the character to hold up the talent and the position. God cares first about the character, and he wants that foundation to be sure. So before honor is humility. Proverbs 26, 1 says, As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. See, Haman wasn't going to get honored because he was a fool. It was not fitting for him. But God will honor the humble. Proverbs 29, 23, A man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. So that goes above and beyond just being honored one time. If you're humble in spirit, you will retain honor. Just like Jesus said, when you go into a banquet, don't sit at the front. Sit at the back. Sit at the, the lower end of the table so that the, then you can be honored by the, the host coming and saying, what are you doing way down there? Come sit up here instead of being humbled by 
um, this is not your place. Can you move down? God wants us to walk in humility. And, and what an example we have in Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the, who got down and washed his disciples' feet, who died on the cross for our sins. So if you are humble in spirit, you will retain honor. Psalm 5, 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as a shield. God will shield you with his favor. God will shield you with his favor. And that word means delight, acceptability, and good pleasure. God delights in his servants. And I just want to tell you this morning that, that the labor and things you have done for him is written in the book. You don't have to worry about being honored or, God, when is my reward going to come? It's coming. It's on the way. God sees what you do. He's going to honor you. We just have to walk in humility. And even it even goes in church, it goes in your job. I remember when I first started working at Lancaster County Library, a dream told me, just do your job and do a good job and mind your own business. And I never forgot that. That's the truth. Just do your job, do the best you can, and mind your own business. And I'm seeing, and I, and I saw it with Todd, wherever he worked, he did a good job, and he was always promoted. He was promoted before some of the guys that had been there for 20-something years. And when he started working at Parker, uh, it, it took the people that they usually hired 18 months to learn how to do that job. It took him three. And he just did a good job. And when he was hired full-time, this one guy said, I don't understand why you are hired so soon. And it, it took them forever to hire me. But if you will be humble and do a good job, God will honor you. You can count on that because he performs his word. He performs his word. And so it's just an honor to serve him in whatever area it is, an honor to serve him. And so I just want to encourage you today. Let's walk humbly. The Lord's working on my heart about this. At work, if something happens and, and something inside me wants to get attitude, I think I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to walk humbly before the Lord. Because I, whatever God desires to give me, I'm going to be satisfied with that. And I'm going to be thankful for it. And I'm going to do the best I can with what he gives me. And then if you're faithful in a little, he's going to give you much. That's his word. So I'm just, I believe this year that many of you are looking at promotion because you've been faithful to God. Promotion in different areas. I don't know all the areas, but God just put that on my heart this week that many of you, God's going to promote you. But we got to walk humbly before him. Just like when the children of Israel came against the enemy in, in Chronicles, all the five kings were gathered against them, and King Jehoshaphat uh, was coming before the Lord, and he sent the tribe of Judah first. He sent the praisers first. And they went before the enemy, and they said, The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. And the Lord told Jehoshaphat, You're not going to have to fight. You're not going to have to do anything. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And I'm telling you that whatever enemy you're facing, it may be a Haman. You know, it may be a Judas. Even Jesus had that amongst his disciples. But I read somewhere this week that Jesus didn't have to kill Judas. He hung himself. You don't have to worry about your enemy. God will take care of your enemy. God will take care of those things that contend with you. All you need to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because God will fight for you. So I just want to encourage you to walk humbly before the Lord. And he will honor you in ways that you have never dreamt possible. And that's just a message I've been telling people. Honor God and he will honor you. It's so simple. This young man came into the library and he was getting, getting a portfolio ready. He was a young guy, high school age. He was getting a portfolio ready to take to this career um, not a festival, but it was kind of like a career conference. And I noticed on his um, portfolio that he had, he was part of Fellowship of Christian Athletes and other things like that. And so when I handed it back to him, I said, I just want to tell you something. And he kind of looked at me and I said, honor God and he will honor you. And he just looked at me and he said, thank you. He needed to hear that. Honor God and he will honor you. So let's just come before him in prayer today. And let's just make it a, a goal or something in our heart, something we want God to deal with us. I want 
the right position that God can honor me. And you say, well, April, what is that position? Walking in humility before the Lord. Not expecting anything, but just standing at the king's gate, being ready and willing to serve in any capacity available. That's where I want to be. And I promise you, when you're in that right position, you will be honored. And it will be exceedingly, abundantly above all that you ask, hope, or even think of. Because that word means abounding. And his will for you is that you abound. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. And as we, as we contemplate ministry and serving you this Sunday, God, I pray that you will add, forgive me for any way that I have not walked humbly before you, God. Any way that I expected certain things or I wanted certain things for me. God, I want to be humble before you. And, Father, we just ask you that you would just fill us with a desire to serve you. Would, Lord, fill us with the desire to just walk humbly before you, God. We want to stand at your gate and serve you because you deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. And I thank you, Father, that for the promotion that you're bringing. I thank you, Lord God, for the honor that you're bringing. I thank you for the reward that you are bringing. You are preparing a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And you not only bring us to a place of deliverance from our enemies, but God, you can even turn the tables and our enemy has to honor us. You're able to do anything. And we give you all the praise. I thank you for every person in this room. God, I speak blessing on them. I thank you that this week they're going to reach somebody with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we praise you and honor you for it. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. So um, we're going to get ready for the meal. So if we could have Jim and Lori are going to be handing up.